Look what we have here today. We have something new from Tovsto. That's T-O-V-S-T-O. -O. And the name of this quad is the Falcon 210. I love little five inch racers, uh, mainly because they have the same power system on here as you would have on something like a 250. So we have that great power to weight ratio, tons of punch out and lift. 30 amp ESCs on here, 2204 motors, uh, beginning with 3S. This is mainly for beginners to intermediate, so if you're just getting into it and you want an RTF with a controller and pretty much race spec stuff on here, this one's good to go. It has a pretty hardcore looking mount in the front with a piece of aluminum plate covering up the LED in the front and a tiltable camera. I believe it was a 500 and 40 TVL, so it's not quite 600 TVL camera on here, but it has a super cool VTX, which is switchable from 25 milliwatt to 200 milliwatt. A lot of these go from 25 to 600, and now they're starting to listen to some of the racers and they're putting us in 200, which is great. Some of them switch from 25, 200 to 600, but 600 tends to drown other people out. If you have someone else racing right next to you and they're flying on 25 milliwatt, you're gonna drown right over top of their video and block their signal. But this one's nice, 200 milliwatt is awesome because you can use this out in a field and you have a great distance with it, uh, a couple football fields. You have a dipole antenna back here with a little, little mount on the back of this, kind of ingenious because this dipole locks into this little clip here and it also has a spot in the front for something smaller like a 5.8 antenna. You can just clip either one into there. So that was nice that the engineers thought of that. You have traditional XT60 in here and these 5040 props, landing gear and motor guard combo. You have ESC covers, four mil bottom plates, uh, well, excuse me, three millimeter bottom plate and four mil arms on here and it looks like we have two mil side plates and some pretty uh some pretty aggressive battery compartment in here that's going to shield the battery from all directions now whether that's going to fit one of my larger 4s batteries that's yet to be determined but we're going to take you out into the field and do a quick flight test of the falcon 210 and then we'll come back in and we'll show you a little closer look at this little quad it's pretty cool looking all right guys, let's go ahead and do a flight test of the Falcon 210. I have everything set up here. I've got my goggles. I'm gonna go ahead and turn those on and I'll record on the DVR so you guys can see the flight footage. Always wanna turn the transmitter on first, then the quad, but it doesn't really make a difference. So everything should be loaded up. I'll check the goggles. I'm gonna make sure we have recording there. Okay, we're good to go. We're recording on the goggles. Now you can see the OSD on there is actually pretty nice. Once I'm armed, you'll see uh, that it says armed and you'll see bottom lower left, you'll see your flight battery on there, 12.3 volts. I'm in stability mode right now, which I'll switch to later and I'll show you the other modes on there. And it also shows us a timer in the bottom right, which is super nice. Keep track of how long you're flying. So I'm recording here and let's go ahead and do a takeoff. Now I did set up the stick to work in clean flight and arm by holding it down and to the right and the way you do that is go into the modes inside clean flight and uncheck where it has the arm switch on there and that will deactivate this button right here so if you pick this up on accident and you're standing over it you could accidentally arm it by pushing that button on accident so i like to have this throttle arm here to the side it doesn't have another switch up here that I can put that arm switch on like I would normally do, but we're gonna do it this way. And now it says hold here to arm and it does actually work this time. So we'll go ahead and arm and take off. And I'm in that stability mode right now. The LEDs look pretty good on the back. So I'm interested to see this power to weight ratio. Let's just go ahead and do a quick punch out real quick. Ready? One, two, three. Oh yeah, and that's on 3S, you guys. It's gone way up there. And right now, it's pretty windy behind me, but I'm in a wind shadow with some trees behind me. So once it gets up there, it really wants to float. Now before you take off, always remember to look left and right. Got a guy coming up on the jogging trail on my left. It's gonna kind of hang out here for a second, but I am in stability mode, so it is super stable in this mode. And I'll turn around forward so you can see the front LEDs. I'm flying nose in, so if you're new to line of sight nose in flying, remember everything is opposites once the quad is nose in. 
And I didn't put the canopy on here for this flight. Because I'm also going to test out a 4S battery on this quad and see how powerful the 4S battery is. Really smooth flying in this stability mode though. I'm pretty impressed with that. Sounds really quiet actually. Pretty nice flying quad. Let's try some more aggressive maneuvers. I'll go ahead and switch into advanced mode here on that next switch down. So that's going to let me flip and roll, but it's still going to have some stability. Try a roll there, try another roll. We'll come back. Come back a little closer so you can see that. I'll do a forward flip. Pretty nice roll rate on there. I expected it to be a lot wider. So if you're going to go into acro mode, the next mode down, third position down is called rolling mode on this transmitter, otherwise known as acro mode. And that gives you no stability. So now I'm flying line of sight in acro, no stability, and I can do really tight rolls. A little tighter than before. I guess about the same. And you can also do motor cuts like this as well, so. I'm going to go back into stability because uh, flying an acro line of sight is always kind of challenging and the field's a little bit wet today, so I don't really want to slam dunk this one in the wet, muddy grass. The sun was out a little earlier, but I didn't get out here in time to really get all the sunshine today. It really will rip if you wanted to. But you could use this quad for freestyle, definitely. Five inch props on here are gonna be great for freestyle, just cruising around in the field. Uh, also for racing, this one would be totally capable of racing. This transmitter is actually pretty nice. Not a big fan of that push button arm. I don't really wanna see a button on future versions of transmitters. I, I like to have it on a switch or on a stick. Uh, if, I, if, I, if I can't do a switch arm, I'll put it on a put it on the stick. Throttle stick arming is not always my favorite either because you could accidentally push it during a maneuver and deactivate your motors. So that's one drawback of a stick arming setup. But it's a pretty peppy quad on these 2204s. And the OSD is super sweet. It's a the fact that you didn't have to put or wire up any additional additional equipment to get OSD is super awesome. You guys are pretty spoiled from uh, what I started out with, with my ZMR250 about three years ago, almost three years ago now. The PDB was the entire length of the quad, which they still do make some PDBs like that, but for durability's sake, I like to have a shorter, smaller PDB. Don't really want extending the full range of the quad. It offered a lot of options, but had a lot of problems with that one. So this is pretty fun flying this. It's actually pretty easy to fly this one, uh, especially in that stability mode. The yaw looks pretty good on here. Test out that yaw rate. Looks pretty nice. These motors have plenty of power. So I gotta say, like the flight flight ability of this quad is. It's up to par, you guys. The transmitter feels nicer than those Fly Sky I6s that I've seen come along with some cheaper China quads. And I actually like these uh, silicon covers. You can take those off. Some people prefer not to fly without them, but kind of like them. It makes the stick, the stick uh, grippy, kind of soft silicone rubber. Boom, a little bit of quick turns with this quad. And the rates are pretty high, just even for this uh, stability mode, you guys. So I'm pretty low on battery right now. Uh, I don't want to go too much lower because we might damage this battery. So I want to come in and land uh, before the battery gets super low. You don't want to damage your battery by flying it down uh, below 10 volts for sure. So 3S. And we'll go ahead and come down and land on the landing pad. We do get a beep alarm on there. That's nice that it's showing you that. 
X marks the spot. Okay, so it's still beeping, letting me know that my battery's critically low. I'll go ahead and unplug that. And now let's go ahead and go back into the studio and take a closer look at the frame and the setup and the components on the Falcon 210. All right, guys, welcome back to the workshop. Now we're on the bench with this Tosvo, Tosto, how the hell do you say that? T-O-V-S-T-O, -T -O, Tosto. Um, you can check out more information on these guys on Tosto.com or you can check out uh, GearBest link down below. If you want to find out more about the specs and see some more nice pictures of this quad, it really is a cool looking quad. Um, and the transmitter is, is decently nice, kind of confusing to me because they had this um, bar on the bottom, but it makes a nice kickstand. Normally do they do this bar on top for a carrying handle, uh, so don't get this confused and fly it upside down with your sticks in the wrong sides. Um, but uh, the quad itself, that's what we want to talk about right now. It looks a lot like the Walkera style quad. It sort of looks like a mini tank, uh, has that removable canopy on top. Very traditional for Walkera style quads, uh, but this might be Tosto's own version. Such a hard word to say, Tosto. Um, and it does look like it's going to be decently durable in the field with these uh, four millimeter arms on here. And you have motor guards, which is super nice because um, coming in for a landing, I've totally smashed motors. Um, even some of my most expensive Luminaire motors I've totally trashed. Uh, nicest thing is that this rig in the front, this looks really durable. Just gonna go ahead and remove this canopy for you. And that pops off, it has two grommets on the bottom back here that just pop off these stems. Very reminiscent of a single rotor heli. Uh, and you got your XT60 here in the very back. And when you put the battery in, that battery cable is going to hang out up top here and it's going to come around and plug in like that. Um, and like I was showing you guys earlier, let's look at the rear. It has this really cool clip on the back that holds the dipole in. And then as you can see, right above that hole, there's a spot for a 5.8 circular polarized antenna. So that's pretty sweet and pretty smart on the engineer's side of things. Uh, looking at it from the side, you have this side plate. Looks like it would be easily replaceable. Now most of the hardware on here, I noticed, looks like we have um, Phillips head screws on here instead of a lot of Allen bolts, which is kind of interesting. I haven't seen them use screws as much as we've seen uh, Allen, Allen bolts. Uh, we have Allen bolts on the bottom of the motors. They look like um, M2s possibly. And it's, it's interesting because this is making it a little more user friendly and easier to work on uh, for new guys. You've always got a Phillips head screwdriver laying around. Some of us don't have drivers uh, laying around. So new guys, be sure to get yourself a set of drivers. Now, one thing that I like about it a lot is the fact that it does have 30 amp ESCs, which means guys, you can run it three to four S. When you're ready for a four S battery, you can toss this one to the side and you don't have to use three S anymore except for on those more mild flights uh, when you just want to cruise around. But for racing, um, I would definitely suggest going 4S. These guys on 4S batteries are gonna smoke you. Um, but looking at it from the front, super cool profile from the side and the rear and the bottom. It looks decent to work on. Uh, this one doesn't look overly complicated and super proprietary, which I like a lot. Um, it is a different design than what I'm used to seeing with some of the X racer frames, uh, but it, like I said, it does look easy to work on. So if you're new to this, it's not going to be the end of the world. If you break something on here, um, there's four bolts that hold these side plates on and they have a couple different, um, pieces that come in from the side here from these metal platforms supporting the side. And it looks like a whole plastic part, um, comes up the, the rear and supports the dipole antenna and then the camera is definitely uh, can go straight ahead just like that or you can tilt it up to about it looks like about 35 about 35 degrees of tilt it's not a monster amount of tilt on that camera uh, not quite like what we've seen with the x jaguar uh, and other cameras that almost went straight up it was an amazing amount of tilt on some of the ones i've seen coming in they definitely know we like camera tilt these days um, but what's one thing that I've got to show you this controller 
Now one thing that's interesting about this controller, and I haven't seen this before on uh, some of the other quads out there, I'm just gonna go ahead and strap this battery in. And I want you guys to see this. Now normally, normally I like to arm my quads with an arm switch. Uh, and I've never had a button, but get that Velcro through there. Okay, be sure to have the Velcro through, through there before you put the battery in, that's a pain right there. Okay, there we go. Challenging me a little bit. Okay, now turn on this transmitter, power switch is here, and I'll plug in the quad. Now, take your props off guys, if you're indoors by the way, for God's sakes. Take your props off. Now, this is interesting because you have this little button right here arms the props and puts you into a low idle. Now, what's strange about that is right here it says hold here to arm. Get it to the camera to focus on that real quick. It says hold here to arm, um, which would be down and to the right. But I go down and to the right and it doesn't do anything. Now, maybe I missed that in the manual. Maybe not, but I did read through the manual that comes along with it, uh, and it didn't say anything about that, but it did say something about this button in the very center, because this might be confused for the power button. You wanna be really careful with this switch because you could be holding it and accidentally hit this switch, and look what happens. So, also, while you're flying, it would it's kind of in a, a close proximity spot to the relation of the sticks. So if you guys out there wanna print some kind of little 3D printed thing uh, to put around this, maybe guard it from your fingers while you're flying, I, I doubt you're gonna push it, but it is there, just keep that in mind. Um, and you do have your light in the back that lets you know when you switch on the transmitter here into the different modes. Uh, you have number one, you have beginner mode for the first position, advanced mode, and then you have what they call rolling mode, which would be acro, be full acro, no stabilization uh, whatsoever. But the LEDs look pretty cool in here too. Super bright in the front and always that classic red in the rear. Now I'm gonna check out the fail safe on the bench. Let's see what they had the fail safe set to. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and arm the motors and then turn the transmitter off. So when I did that test, the motors actually spooled up more. Um, why, I don't know, but I definitely suggest if you do get this quad, go ahead and plug this into clean flight and make sure that your fail safe is set up to uh, drop. And that's what I usually do. I like to see those motors completely quit when I turn that transmitter off. So these, for some reason, go higher than the actual throttle um, idle position. So be ready for that you could have a flyaway if you don't have your fail safe set up. So very, very important for you to go out and do your first flights that you have your fail safe set up. Now you're looking at the accessories that come along with it. They do give you a nice screwdriver with a reinforced tip on here and you get the US style plug. Uh, I didn't get the EU version this time, thank goodness. I don't have to use that converter that I'd usually show you guys. Uh, this B3 compact charger is pretty decent, pretty bulky. It does charge two to three cell batteries. Um, I'm not sure I'd charge one or anything over 3S on there. Don't try to charge a 4S battery on there because it's not gonna work. You only have two ports on the bottom of here. You have this 2S port here and the 3S port. This is a balanced lead charger. So you won't be able to plug in the XT60 on there like traditional chargers. Um, but you also get a little toolkit here with a wrench for tightening down your, your motor uh, nuts on top of your props. And you get a little tiny Allen wrench in there as well. But um, pretty nice little kit. 
It also does include a quick start guide here that has pretty decent English instructions. And you want to read about this little uh, controller before you start flying this one and, and how to unlock the motors. Uh, because I was confused about the, the label on the transmitter and uh, trying to get it to arm because honestly I looked at this little icon right here and it says lock unlock and I had no idea what that was until I pressed it on the bench. Um, so props on indoors, make sure your props are off. You also have your channel frequencies and your dip switch positions here. They're all labeled in this manual for 200 milliwatt and 25 milliwatt. It has information in here about your OSD as well. But this quad seems to have a little bit of everything. Uh, I would like to see beta flight on this quad, but it might be flashable with beta flight if you want to do that later. Uh, but SP Racing F3 is a good flight controller. I've had good luck with those this year. So um, additionally, lastly, you get some variety of stickers in here with this kit. You get white, yellow, and orange, uh, close to a red. You can put down the side of your canopy, and jazz it up a little more. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about my final thoughts and opinions on this setup from uh, Tovesto. All right, guys, final opinion time for the Falcon 210. Uh, let's go ahead and give it a quick star rating. I'm going to say 4.0 uh, on this one and for a couple reasons, which I'll share with you. But first, let's talk about the cool stuff about this quad. It's already built. Don't have to build anything. Is it for me? No, it's probably for beginner to intermediate. Uh, and that is awesome. If you're a new guy looking for something and you don't want to spend a ton of money, you don't want to buy a $500 RTF, this one flies pretty aggressive. Uh, for what it is. Those 2204 motors with 30 amp ESCs on there, chitching, very, very cool because you can run three to 4S. Now, one thing I did notice when I put my 4S battery in there to test it out on that, I could not get the canopy on. Uh, it fits this smaller, the 1300, this is a 3S 1300, and uh, this Luminaire graphene battery, this is a 4S, it does fit in there without the canopy. But if you put the canopy on, I just couldn't get the canopy on. Uh, so that's that's a no-go for the 4S. But you can still fly it on 4S, just not with the canopy. Uh, and I believe the canopy provides a little more protection for the battery, but not a huge deal. Um, and you have your kind of your battery cable hanging out back here. I probably tuck my charge lead down in the bottom there. But everything looks nice and snug on this. I like the design. Everything is also shielded with some industrial plastic. Uh, your ESCs are shielded. The ESCs um, definitely look like they're going to do their job. Now, also, you have a metal plate here in the front, which is super cool for banging into hard stuff. It looks like it's going to be durable from just about every side of this. Now, the only uh, pitfalls that I can see about this are maybe the 540 TVL camera. I'd like to see a 6 to 700 TVL camera on there. And uh, I would also like to see some maybe maybe some thicker sidewalls on here, maybe 2.5 um, to 2.6. And on the very bottom, these feet look like they might break eventually uh, with some hard landings on some hard surfaces. So definitely be on the lookout for these. They look like uh, they might possibly break. They do flex though, so that's a good thing. Now from the very back, uh, this this only. Um, makes me a little bit nervous down here because of the way this sticks out on the back. Normally I like to have a little more control of my VTX uh, where I want to put it, but this is not going to be able to be moved anywhere. This is going to be a fixed position VTX on here. Um, but pretty easy to work with overall. It was easy to work on the props, take the props on and off. Uh, and it looks like it's going to be pretty easy to repair, especially for new guys. You don't have all those drivers yet. You can get this thing apart uh, just using a screwdriver, which is pretty cool. And, and it comes with a screwdriver. And it also comes with an Allen wrench where you could take these motors off if you needed to replace a motor. Uh, so looks like everything on here is, is easy to replace um, and pretty easy to fly. So I would, I would consider this if you're looking for something that's going to be kind of cool looking, functional, has top spec race stuff on here, and it has OSD. That is also a huge, huge bonus. OSD on here is huge. You're not going to kill your batteries because you're going to fly them down to uh, this, this lowest volt, 11.1 uh, volt, and then you're going to land. Um, so definitely a cool quad to consider.
So thanks again for watching this review, guys. I'm Justin Davis, and I will see you on the next one.